is TechStrong TV. I'm Bonnie Schneider for TechStrong TV, and today we're talking about electric vehicles. They've certainly become increasingly popular as a means of transportation, with battery technology being the driving force behind the success of EVs. Well, it's a critical area of focus for innovators and experts alike. Today I'm joined by two executives from the Cortec Group, CEO Matt Cappers and VP of Partnership and Innovation Michelle Tokars to discuss the exciting innovations happening in the EV battery industry. Welcome to both of you and thanks for joining us. Hi Bonnie, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having us. Great. Well, um, Matt, can you tell us a little more about the Cortec Group and its mission in the EV battery industry? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And, and thank you for this opportunity. Uh, the Cortec Group, our team, we're experts in engineering silicon, and we're using our expertise to develop a silicon anode for, uh, for the EV battery market. Uh, we call it the Endurian. It's the Endurian battery. Uh, you know, silicon has some really unique properties that, that, that Michelle will speak to. Um, but, you know, uh, with, with, with battery technology, the emphasis recently has been on battery, battery chemistry. I was in a conference over the fall uh, at the Automotive News Conference in Nashville, and all the major automakers were there, and battery chemistry was the resounding theme throughout the, uh, throughout the conference. And I thought maybe, Michelle, would you mind saying a little bit about the, sil the properties of silicon? Yeah, so um, people have known about silicon for a while, and silicon, if you know EVs, you know the main battery is a lithium-ion battery. Um, yes. And so the ability to hold lithium ions is what's important to the battery performance. Um, silicon can hold 10 times the amount of lithium as current graphite anodes, and yet silicon still, for the most part, is not found very readily in most lithium ion batteries. So we're hoping to tweak, we're hoping to make our unique silicon uh, form that you, allows you to increase the performance of the battery. Can you talk, Michelle, a little bit more about that uh, technology and how you're looking to advance it within the industry? Yeah, so it it, it comes down to um, energy density, charge time, and cycle life. Those are the three main components people want in their vehicles. So we are using a proprietary silicon-based um, anode uh, with a modification of the surface. So. Um, the way the lithium ions interact with the nanoparticles is what contributes to the energy density, the charge time, and the cycle life. That's what we're hoping to affect. Yeah, and, and, and Bonnie, the, the EV industry, you know, what, what Michelle is speaking to, you know, with energy density, uh, what that means is how, how, how far the EV can travel, you know, the mm -hmm, rate. Mm -hmm. So if you can increase energy density, um, you know, instead of going a 300 mile range, if you can get a 450 mile range, that's a game changer for the EV industry. And, and That's along, such a great point. You know, and, and along the same lines, it also could potentially make the battery lighter and weight is a big factor uh, with EVs. And then- Yeah, I was just gonna ask you for the driver, uh, you know, that that's something I think you're bringing home to a lot of people that have um, electric vehicles. They wanna know how far they can go, how long the battery lasts. So you, you can you explain a little bit more how that might affect an, an everyday driver with these ch potential changes in their battery life? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just, just the whole idea of being able to go on a trip, you know, you know it, being able to go on a 400 mile trip versus a 200 mile trip without having to stop to charge. And, and one of the other advantages with silicon is um, it could potentially uh, uh, enable the battery to charge faster. So, you know, uh, you know, the government just passed the big infrastructure bill about adding charging stations. Well, if, if you can charge your battery a little faster, that's going to open up more charging stations. So it's a um, good point. You know, yeah, the silicon silicon is is really the next frontier in, in battery development. If I can say another thing about range, you know, and until the infra charging infrastructure gets a little bit more developed, being assured that you could drive farther is going to help that situation. 
That's true. And also, as, as, as you both mentioned, you know, the shorter time actually to sit there and, and be charging, that's also another game changer. Um, Michelle, I want to take a, a deeper dive into the minerals that are, this is something that's talked a lot about with how do we supply battery power and how do we do it sustainably. The minerals that are abundant um, in some parts of the world are not abundant in others. Can you talk more about that and, and kind of the, just give some folks a background on what goes into figuring out what works and what doesn't with uh, electric vehicles and comes of batteries. Well, and you know, something Matt mentioned in the very, very beginning is a lot of people are looking at the battery chemistry. There's the architecture, there's the physical structure, but the actual chemistry is what's involved in making a battery that performs better. And the chemistry, we're mainly talking about the electrodes, so the anode and the cathode. And it's simply a matter of what are the electrodes made of. Most cathodes are made of um, some combination of lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt, iron, all available in the Earth's crust. Um, anodes are mainly made of graphite. We're adding small amounts of silicon. Um, so those are the key minerals, you know, but I will say to your question about availability of minerals, um, it's kind of a mining question and kind of an early, more upstream, but I mean, you yeah, 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 that's, too. A little, that's a little further upstream in the, in the, or downstream in the, uh, supply chain, but, uh, so far we haven't had any problems with that. That that's interesting. And Matt, when you're doing this entire uh, process, um, to create something that's for sustainability. How do you do that while also being sustainable? Can you talk about some of the implementations that your company is doing to keep the process as sustainable as possible? Sure, sure. And, and you know, we're working at, at a very small level. We call it the nanoparticle level. Um, but, but we use a lot of reagents and solvents, and it's important to use, uh, you know, eco-friendly solvents um, because you can take some shortcuts, but if you use some some really uh, dangerous substances, you have to be you have to be very careful. But I think you know, in general, Bonnie, if you take a if you take a step back, you know the the advancements in battery will lead to a more adoption of electric vehicles and electrification in general, which will help decarbonize the planet. So that's more our mission is to is to create a better battery and and increase adoption of electric vehicles. You know, and, and Bonnie, you had mentioned, you know, the driver experience, you know, if if you can be assured of being able to recharge your battery in the same five or 10 minutes that it takes people to fill up their gas tank right now, that's what's going to further EV adoption and will further electrification. That's a great point. And, and Matt, in, in terms of the EV industry in general, where do you think that your solution fits in? And where do you feel the future is moving towards with this greater demand? As you mentioned, some of the new legislation that will that's giving more opportunities for EVs, and I think more people are definitely moving in that direction. But uh, where do you see your solution fitting into the present situation and moving forward? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the next step for the Cortec Group and the Enduring Battery is, is to partner with a, with a major automotive company or a major battery company. Um, you know, at that point, they can they can propel us up into the next level. You know, for for currently, we're just working on the anode, which is one of three or four parts of a battery. Um, but that's the, that's frankly that's the area that we think we can deliver the, the greatest performance. So that's that's the next step in the evolution of our company. It's really a fascinating. How long have you been uh, working on this process um, for both of you? Is this is this something that's a um, personal passion of yours in terms of sustainability and creating these new innovations in that area? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And, and you know, Bonnie, one thing that, uh, you know, we're, we're in Ann Arbor, Michigan and, you know, next to University of Michigan. And, and that the, the whole environment here is, is really incredible about, about supporting the, the environmental and, and the, the clean tech, I guess, is the buzzword now, the clean tech industry. And then we're also very fortunate to be right down the road from Detroit, which is, you know, the epicenter of, of automotive sure. development. Yeah. And what about you, Michelle? Yeah, well, the Endurian project is about a year old. We've been um, working on it. And yeah, this is one of the ideal places in the area to be working on innovations in general. Um, another thing, you know, Matt didn't mention was University of Michigan is in our backyard. We just spent a week at their battery lab um, using their equipment and their expertise. So it's um, it's an exciting time to be in, in batteries. There's a lot going on. Well, it sounds like you're both in the right place at the right time. And Bonnie, we're really proud of our team. We've got a, we've got a really brilliant group of, of research scientists that have 
have deep silicon and battery experience. So it's it's really fun to bring them all together and and uh, and, and make something really really cool and innovative. Well, thank you both. Um, it's been a very interesting conversation with Matt Cappers uh, and Michelle Tokars, both of the Cortec Group, learning more about chemistry and EV batteries and innovations in that area. Really appreciate your time today here on Tech Strong TV. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Bonnie. Thanks, Bonnie. All right, well, have a great day. We're going to be right back with more. Stay with us.